and welcome to another vlogmas video from me Lauren from Lauren and the books I hope you're all having a wonderful day today I'm going to be doing my mid-month wrap-up where I talk about the books that I've read so far this month I also read th I've also tagged three Christmas books on the end of my um, November wrap-up so I will link that down below if you want to go and check out those if you just need to know what three they were um, I don't tend to do a wrap-up uh, at the end of December um, as I would normal months because I read all Christmas books throughout December and I feel like when January comes round no one gives a shit about you <laughs> what Christmas books you've read because they're not going to read them until the next year so I'm trying to fit as much as I can into this um, mid-month wrap up and then maybe I'll mention a few I've got my at the moment video coming up next month uh, next week and it'll be my um, uh, cozy reading night vlog which I'll mention a few more books that I've read so so far this month I have it's the 13th of December and so far I've read a book every single day in December so I'm feeling pretty pretty pleased with myself some of them are these tiny little guys some of them are bigger ones some of them are audio books but I'll start with the two books that I've actually put down for the month and both are very similar I'm gonna lean over I only have to lean over twice and then we never have to lean over again so bear with me mm. hi so the two books that I've DNA'd um, the first one is um DNA'd DNF'd the first one is the Faber book of Christmas um, which was sent to me kindly by Faber last year I don't think I would hate this I just feel like it was a bit sort of I'm gonna say academic for me guys I just feel like it's a little bit too academic that being said I did only read the introduction um, but I just put it down and I was like oh maybe I'll come back to that later just not for me now um, and then when I put that down I picked this one up hoping um, it would be a replacement for that book because I was so excited about this and the front cover is so gorgeous and I've been, I'm so disappointed. This is Merry Midwinter, How to Rediscover the Magic of the Christmas Season by Gillian Monks. I have read 42 pages of this so I feel like I've given it a good whack. I don't think it's for me. There, I rolled my eyes on three separate occasions whilst reading this. This is very much for the biggest um, sort of... <laughs> What most the best organized person you can get your you, you can you can imagine in your head so i think if you're very very organized then this is going to be for you so she so she says things like you need a separate address book for your christmas cards i haven't even got to any i've got as far as writing christmas cards get a separate address book to write all your christmas card addresses in get a book to write tips and tricks so you can get that out every year and have a look at the things that you've remembered and she says things like when you're posting a Christmas card, put some good energy in that card and make sure you write a really long letter. And she loves round robins and things like that. I just don't feel like Gillian Monks and I would be pals. Um, and yeah, it's just been a bit sort of, to be honest, I described it on my Instagram account as smug and I stand by that. I feel like it's a bit smug. It's very privileged Christmas if you've got a lot of ex like if you've got a lot of money to spend on Christmas, you can do this. She does give alternatives. Um, she she quotes her her mother using um, tips to to save to save money at this time of year. But it's things like <sighs> it's things like if you um, if you've got no rolling pin, you can use an empty glass wine bottle. And I'm like, uh, I don't know how use a cup as a cutter for jam tarts and a saucer or plate as pattern for pastry circle, large or small. No, it wasn't for me. So I've given up on those two. Not to, not that I won't ever read them again. Who knows? I may well go back to either of these, but uh, not for me this year. So I've DNF'd both of those. Not that that didn't count as me going back over there. Then I would just talk about the two audiobooks that I have um, completed so far this month. The first one was The Night I Met Father Christmas by Ben Miller. Um, both of the audiobooks that I've listened to have been really, really short ones. Um, I really enjoyed this. This was a, um, a, ch a child's short story, a child's story um, about Father Christmas, how he became Father Christmas, um, but which features aspects of the Christmas Carol. It was really fun. I'm sure the book is lovely because I've heard it's got some wonderful illustrations in there. Um, ben Miller himself, who's the author, narrated the audiobook, and I really like that. He did a really good job of um, the the voices and um, the sort of exasperation and stuff like that. I enjoyed it. It was um, it 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 was a children's book set at Christmas, and I enjoyed it. There's not much more to say about about it other than that. But yeah, I feel like if you've uh, younger, um, a younger a younger 
crew would also enjoy it. Crew? I don't know where that came from. Uh, and then the second audiobook that I listened to is a book that I actually read last year, and that's An Almost Perfect um, Christmas by Nina Stibby. Um, Nina Stibby has written a book called um, Love Nina, which I started reading last year in non-fiction November and never finished, but very much enjoyed it. Um, and this book, when I read it last year, you know, when I read it last year, I thought every single thing in there, I thought it was a collection of non-fiction sort of essays and pieces about her Christmases, but on listening to it this year you it's not it's it's short stories there are bits in there about her Christmases but it's short stories and I was thinking my goodness me she has had some varied Christmases this woman um and thinking gosh she doesn't really mention the same people over and over again so it made a lot more sense to me this year when I was realizing that there were some short stories in there and some non-fiction pieces and things like that it's very quintessentially British Christmas I enjoyed it um I particularly enjoyed the story of her getting ready for her um she she said she was going to host a Christmas party and um and her sister sort of helping her out and telling her she needs to make 150 mince pies and her sort of like spending two hours in the morning of the party putting a, um, a playlist together which basically comprised of Silent Night over and over again by different people um, and I really enjoyed that so yeah it was it was good fun and um, I listened to the audiobook and enjoyed it and um, enjoyed it when I read it last year however was a bit bemused by it last year not really realising that it was short stories and non-fiction pieces now I'm doing my second lean over here because these are the books that I've read so far this month. Um, I will group the first three together because they are groupable three together. And there's not much I can say about these. I've mentioned these quite a lot. Um, but these are the Carol Ann Duffy little poetry collections. Um, I listened to, uh, I read Mrs. Scrooge, um, Pablo Picasso's Noel and Another Night Before Christmas. This is my favourite one. I gave it five stars last year. I gave it five stars this year. Absolutely loved it. Um, Mrs. Scrooge, I think, gave three stars and Pablo Picasso Noel's two stars. Um, enjoyable really cute little things just to pick up and just have a wonderful time with so enjoyed those where do i put those there uh, the next one i read was a picture book and it is last stop on the reindeer express which is by maldy powtuck and carl james mountford this is beautiful um and just everything about it is just absolutely gorgeous it's a picture book um a lot of cutouts in um I will show you, I don't want to ruin everything for you, but like there's doors to go through. So for instance, this door here um, leads to uh, the North Pole and it's all about um, the, the young girl Mia uh, missing her father at Christmas and writing him a letter and wanting to get him a present there. And it's just, it's just really lovely. The illustrations are gorgeous. The colours are lovely. Um, it's definitely something that I will revisit and revisit. I'm going to put them on the floor. There we go. Uh, the next one is a uh, another picture book um, that David and I um, started reading together and then I finished by myself and that is um, Search and Find A Christmas Carol. This is obviously based on Charles Dickens but also written by, it doesn't say who, oh Sarah Powell. Um, I really enjoy these sort of things where uh, they give you a list of things that you've got to find within this picture and that aspect of it I really really enjoyed however the actual storytelling was really crap like if I just so this is the day before Christmas and this is the the telling of it it says in which Scrooge proclaims his hatred of Christmas Bob Cratchit shivers in the cold office Fred arrives with an offer for his uncle Scrooge refuses Fred's Christmas invitation charity collectors arrive for a asking for money Scrooge angrily denounces helping the poor Bob Cratchit runs home to leave his family and Scrooge grudgingly leaves for his house so Yes, all those things did happen, but it's just not very well told. And I, I understand that the focus of it is to find these items in here, but I just feel like it's a really good story and a well-known story and a little bit more could have been done rather than just listing things that have happened. So I think that knocked it down from a four to a three for me. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed the, uh, the finding aspect of it. However, I will say there's a double page in here, and David and I were doing it, where you're supposed to find 11 trunks as, as in trunks of luggage 16 sorry 16 heavy trunks we have looked and looked and looked we can only find 15 and even the answers at the back only show 15 not good enough. Uh, the next one is a short story collection um, that is Winter Magic uh, which is curated by Abby Elphinstone and it has um, short stories in here from people such as Catherine Woodfine, Jamila Gavin, Emma Carroll, Piers Torday, Michelle Harrison. I really enjoyed this. I um, did this, I was terrible. We were supposed to, I was supposed to buddy read this with Eleanor and Mercedes um, and I just, I've literally been listening through the messages today that Eleanor was leaving as it, 
Mercedes was also crap. That's my, me and Mercedes. We're not the best buddy readers. Um, and um, Eleanor has left a message after each story that she's finished. And I've just been listening through to them today. I really enjoyed this. I feel like they didn't enjoy it as much as I did. Um, they were both a bit underwhelmed by the first story, which I feel like the first story might have been my, my favourite story. There's a whole host of wonderful, wonderful stories in here. And I'd really recommend it. I mean, I put it in my gift guide. I was that in love with it. Um, there's um, stories about um, time travel. There's stories about uh, the Nutcracker. There's stories about um, a girl who goes on holiday and breaks her leg and then oversees something in another hotel room and uh, tries to find that out herself. There's stories about secret, it, there's stories like retellings of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and I really love this and I feel like this is something that I will definitely come back to every year. Um, some of them do allude to Christmas but the major theme throughout this is winter magic which is why I fe uh, featured it in my book, um, my bookish gift guide because I don't really like giving or receiving Christmas items for Christmas because how much use are you going to get out of them really? Um, but this one I feel like you could comfortably give knowing that it's winter themed and there are a few Christmas things in there but definitely the majority of the stuff in here is winter themed so yeah I gave that four stars really really enjoyed it uh, and then uh, the last two books that I've got here the first one is A Far Away Smell of Lemon by Rachel Joyce this is just a small um, short story from her um, collection a snow the snow garden which I read about three or four years ago and actually having read this I thought oh I wouldn't mind giving those short stories a read again so I've actually got that out of the storage unit because I wasn't going to read it this year I just didn't fancy it but having read this this is the first short story in the snow garden collection this was done for an exclusive for Waterstones a few uh, maybe last year and I just picked it up not realizing it was in the snow garden collection but it's just a real cute little thing um to read and it's about a um a woman binny who was four hours on christmas eve to make christmas happen um her partner's just left her for another woman who is pregnant and um she stumbles acro across a um a cleaning shop a specialist cleaning shop um and she sort of um takes time to reflect on um her uh, her what her christmas could be like and and um she yeah it's just really really nice story i really enjoyed it i read it in the bath in one sitting very much enjoyed it would recommend obviously if you like this you'll probably like the snow garden short stories now the last one i've got was a five star one and i've read it today and i've absolutely loved it and i can tell you now if you've got children next year you'll be getting you'll be i'll be and i buy for your children next year they'll all be getting this because this is an absolute dream this book this is a library edition of um one christmas wish by Catherine rundle which is illustrated by emily sutton now the story itself is fantastic and funny and um i'll read you out of it it's really cute um but the illustrations in this absolutely blew me away so it's all it tells the story of um a young lad theo who's been left with his babysitter his mother and father work a lot and he doesn't spend much time with them and there doesn't seem like there's going to be much of a Christmas this year um, and he wishes, he has a Christmas wish on a shooting star and he wishes to um, to not be alone um, and after that wish um, his toys and uh, the his toys and the tree decorations come alive um, and he takes that they take him on a bit of an adventure now the illustrations I'm going to show you in a minute but I want to just read this bit because it really made me laugh so one of the little tin soldier decides that he wants to be in love. Um, he he needs he needs someone to play his drum for, um, and he um, he goes to the toy. They go to the toy store to um, to get to get him a a, a, a a a love a love, and they find a princess there who's going to be his love, and um, <laughs> they leave the toy store because he wants to. Um, he he wants to fight. He's a little toy soldier, and he wants to fight. And Theo explains to him that you don't have to fight if you're a soldier your job is to protect and as they're leaving the toy store the tin soldier says Theo there's one other thing said the tin soldier he held his princess tightly by the earlobe they were still learning how to be in love <laughs> and I just thought that was so cute and there's a few little bits in there that are just really really funny but oh my god the app the illustrations in this and there's a few double pages of illustrations which are a real treat and something I really really love in a storybook in a picture book but look at this this is Theo and the rocking horse looking through the window of his neighbor who's a piano teacher and he wants um her to teach the robin who's come alive um how to sing um oh my god it's absolutely gorgeous I'll show you one more because I don't want to ruin it if you haven't got it let me find I don't want to show you the, the best one at the back but this is also another one this is the angel um the angel off the top of the tree 
tree um she they found lots of um of of feathers on the floor um, and they stuck them to her wings and she's flying high above the cathedral oh it's just absolutely wonderful i read it with such joy um and actually by the time i got to the last line it really made me i feel like choked up at the end i love this and if you're looking for um a christmasy book to read to children or even to read and enjoy as an adult i loved this uh five stars thought it was absolutely fantastic um really 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 loved it so those are the books that i've read so far in december how is your december reading going are you reading christmasy books are you enjoying your christmas reading if you are um i can't believe that i've still managed to read a book a day i'm really really impressed with myself so i feel like the the key to it has been that i've been reading the long ones as i go and then if i think i'm not going to finish a book that day also i've read two very short um audiobooks which has really helped out um i've just sort of picked up a, a picture book but i've actually come to the end i've only got i'm looking over there one two three four five six seven i've only got seven christmas books left so it is going to come to a point where I'm not going to be reading a Christmas book a day um but yeah so far so good really really enjoyed this has been my favorite of the month absolutely loved it um but yeah enjoying my Christmas reading I hope you are too and I will see you all again soon for another vlogmas video goodbye